paranormal Karen. She's so spooky, paranormal Karen. Funny too, paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah, cha cha cha. Hey everybody, welcome to Paranormal Karen. I have, or first of all. Uh, join my Patreon uh, if you're interested in tarot and psychic development. I am having a blast over there. Um, also, KarenRontowski.com. I forget to promo myself uh, if you want to uh, book a reading or something. And I'll let you know when I have shows coming up. So I have forever heard people talking about the Schumann Resonance. And I nod my head as though I know what they're talking about. And then sometimes I even pass on the information as though I know what I'm saying. <laughs> and today, we're going to clear that all up with my friend Andrea Land. How are you today? I am great, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to talk to you about this. Okay, so I was talking to someone else. I think it was Maria on her, on my podcast, and she said I asked her about this, and she said you got to talk to Andrea. Andrea, correct? I'm saying that correct, right? Uh, Andrea, but I'm not picky about it. I'm not pretentious, so you just say my name however you like. <laughs> I'll put a little I'll put a little uh, thing over it so I know how to say that. So. She said, she said, you got to talk to her and she knows all what this is about. And she knows about the dragons. And I was like, the dragons, I don't know what, but I was, you know, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. if there's dragons, I'm in. So as we're getting up to this point where I'm supposed to interview you two days before I get a, an email from the College of Psychic Studies in England. I get their email. I don't know. I don't rarely read it. Open this one. The first thing, the dragons of light clearing and repairing ourselves and the planet. Talk about synchronicity, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. That was a workshop. I didn't see that workshop because I wanted to talk to you. So first of all, tell me, uh, who you are, how you got into uh, this sort of <laughs> metaphysical world. Let's start with that. All right. Well, um, I'll try to give you the elevator pitch on that because it's sort of a 52-year story. But um, the <laughs> I, was, I had a certain amount of uh, metaphysical privilege, if you will, because I happened to be born into a family that was into all of it, Edgar Casey, psychics, uh, paranormal investigation, UFOs. I mean, you name it. My family talked about it. We had seances at the kitchen table with my grandmother's friends, and what? there was uh, pendulums and scrying. I mean, I. <laughs> you want to talk about like being bored into it? I sure was. <laughs> I actually, but that sounds like a very exciting childhood. Yeah, it, it was. It was. I mean, I'm grateful that I had that part of it because, there, you know, there's always the other side. <laughs> so we had quite a bit of quite a bit of nuttiness and uh, drama and trauma and all that. But I wouldn't trade it for anything because it allowed me to move through the world, at least having some understanding of all of this and of myself. Uh, the first time I read cards, I was eight years old at my school carnival. <laughs> wow. And you must have also um, a kind of, it's kind of prepared you for this time, wouldn't you say? Uh, oh, definitely. I, I mean, there's so much that my grandmother told me over and over before she passed when I was 21 that comes back to me now. Um, the biggest thing being, because I would ask her, well, but grandma, what am I supposed to do while I'm here? And she would say, all you have to do is be you. All you have to do is be yourself. And of course, that was frustrating as hell to a kid and a teenager, and young adult. <laughs> but now it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> could, I have a, could I have a guidebook? <laughs> exactly. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Now, when was she, how old were you when you're, that's a, and kind of incredible for a kid to be asking, what am I supposed to do in the universe? Isn't it? Um, I guess. Yeah. I, what happened to me, it's kind of, it's a funny story, but I'll try to keep it short uh, because human resonance is a huge topic and I want to make sure I can answer all your right, questions and what a busy lady you are. <laughs> um, but I saw the movie Xanadu. <laughs> when I was 10 years old. And before that movie came out, 
I had met my first star seed, like my other kid who was a star seed. And she and I became fast friends and we would practice. Re- I mean, we didn't know what we were doing, but we were practicing Reiki on each other. And we would walk down the street near our, you know, in, in our neighborhood and listen to the people in the houses and feel how they were feeling. And, you know, and, and then we'd go lay under a tree and make the wind move and talk to the tree. And so all of this kind of uh, metaphysical paranormal starseed connection was happening with me and, and this friend that I still have to this day. Wow. And then that movie came. And so she and I knew, like, we would talk about it. We're like these nine, 10 year old girls talking about how we knew we were from a star and we knew we weren't from here and we knew we were light. And then I saw the movie Xanadu, (laughs) of all things. That was uh, really the beginning of, I guess, more of my personal awakening of starting to understand a little bit. And I I wouldn't understand fully until a couple of years ago. But I I was like, "That's, that's what I was. I was a muse. I was light. And I understood that that was what I did before I came to earth, that I, I went to different places and inspired people. Wow. I, you, you actually still have that title now? Cause I think that's uh, amazing. Call yourself a muse. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Also, <laughs> um, I've, I've gone through a really, uh, remarkable and almost hard to explain sometimes multidimensional expansion of my consciousness over the last year and in March I believe March March to May there were a few different events that um, all sort of came together with a bunch of downloads and then I got this full knowing and I I realize now and and what I understand now is that I'm actually uh, it's so hard for me to say this out loud. This is like some, when I listen to Jessa, it's like, I feel that same energy from her, but I have to just deal with it and say it publicly as much as I uh, am forced to do. But, um, yeah, I know it is. <laughs> so I embody, uh, the goddess Nemesin and that isn't, uh, goddesses are celestial bodies. They are the consciousness of celestial bodies. And there is an asteroid Nemesin that the goddess Nemesin is the goddess of memory and the mother of the muses. And she is the daughter of Gaia and um, Uranus. Well, first of all, if she's the goddess of memory, I need some. <laughs> that is be. I love this. So, but this is really interesting. And I know this is a weird question, but that would be a, like I'm almost curious now how as a muse this is weird. this is so capitalist can you make a living as a muse um <laughs> I believe that's a real you know I, I that's a real thing I know sometimes when people come to me for readings they're really just looking for inspiration and someone to go yeah that's what you should be doing and they know it would that be kind of a muse uh it is um you know that muse energy a lot of people carry that and i i believe that uh our consciousness is fractalized uh at a certain point with an event a, a galactic event and so that means that there are uh, you know pieces of nemesin all over the place and you know pieces of the uh the being that is me all over the place and i have gathered a whole bunch of nemesin and that's why at this time i have that deep connection to that and i i haven't figured out exactly how to um you know charge people for inspiration but i do read cards and i i um i do mediumship and pet communication i have the podcast i talk a lot about grid work ascension um how what's happening out in the solar system actually affects us so much down here on earth and how to deal with all that um and one of the reasons I started studying the Schumann resonance is because I felt the physical effects of that. But and you was say nice segue because I was just listening to you and I was like, okay, how are you going to get all that into an hour? Because she's so interesting. <laughs> and let's this right Grooving Goddess is your yes. podcast. 
Yes, I have a podcast called Grooving Goddess, and I have a few others, but they're incidental and not that important. Uh, Grooving Goddess is the important one. I have a Patreon as well that's also, you know, Patreon slash Grooving Goddess. And in there, I educate about grid work, space weather, multidimensional expansion, and a new service that I just started offering that is this, a quick 20-minute um meditation that i take you through and what we do is we expand out your consciousness uh multi-dimensionally create a torus with a permanent toroidal loop of energy that flows through you like a river and i i give you access to um the nemesin library of all knowledge you find your book and you put that in your torus and then in the last 10 minutes we bring you all back into your body so that you are fully embodying your light in the depths of you, which are as infinite inside as they expand outward. Wow. So I believe that is how I'm going to be able to uh, get paid to be of use. <laughs> that's how you're going to muse it up. Um, <laughs> that's how I'm going to muse it up. That's, that could be your next, uh, that could be your title. I'm musing it up. <laughs> Um, okay. uh, so now, uh, start me on the Schumann resonance. What is All it? right. Well, I did my note taking and my research and I'm so excited because I, I'm like all prepared. And before I really dig into it though, I just want to tell you the one amazing thing. I, every time I do research on stuff, I always find something I haven't seen yet. And when I was preparing to talk to you, one of the things I found was that, the first Schumann resonance spike that went up above its normal hertz frequency, which won't mean anything until I explain a little more, but just trust me, it was the first time that it changed. And that was in January 31st, 2017. So I thought to myself, hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to go back and look at the solar activity and what else is going on, uh, because solar activity and also human consciousness has a direct effect on the Schumann resonance. So guess what happened <laughs> January 21st and 22nd, uh, right before that Schumann spike, we had the Women's March, oh. one of the largest one-day protests uh, in our history, and we also had the next day a very large solar flare, uh, the largest solar storm, in fact, that we have had since the one we had this last week. So talk about divine timing that I'm on here, right? Um, that geomagnetic storm we just had, the last one that was that size was four years ago. And that was the first time that there was a Schumann spike. But I knew that it couldn't just be the sun because we had another very large storm in 2012 and there was no Schumann spike. So I thought that was just kind of fascinating. And I wanted to throw that out there and also shout out to Jessica because she was sort of right about how uh, Trump was a necessary thing. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, my, uh, I, I will tell you this. I agree with that. And I also feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm voiding all politics cause I'm, I'm moving. I, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'll someday, maybe I'll talk about it, but I just feel like I'm neither one now. I'm like a political orphan right now. And yes, um, I, I don't like any of them. Uh, and I think yes. for the revolution, but anyways, but this is, yes, yes, I know you're my revolutionary. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I, and I didn't mean to bring that up as like, is it too political, so you know, right, it but was, it's just such a, it was such an oppositional friction yes. that it was like the friction that was necessary in human consciousness when combined with the solar activity to begin this cycle of activation. And, so, yes, I will. and what you brought up was totally in context with what we're talking about. So don't worry about a thing. Um, okay. All right. It was great. Uh, so free to, too, if you want to. I, yeah. You know. oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, well, and I mean, the events we've been going through for the last four years have definitely all been part of this process. But yeah. so the and human resonance. Uh, dying, I just have to say I'm dying to make a yeah. solar flare female march joke but i can't find it but it's almost like the power <laughs> <of women. laughs> 
about men. <laughs> and some man would say, and they were all on their period. No, the power of women caused that to happen. I think that's fantastic. Okay, now I won't interrupt you. Yeah. Tell us. About oh, no, no, no. I love it because that's exactly what I thought when I saw it. I thought divine, uh, feminine, and sacred rage for the win, you know? Um, so, which makes sense with the the beginning of the age of Aquarius coming, you know? But, all right, so Schumann resonance is a mathematical equation that was uh, created by Otto Schumann in 1952 to measure the uh, VLF, or very low frequency spectrum peaks, that are created between Earth's crust and the ionosphere. The space in that cavity, uh, when it's excited by lightning, it creates um, wavelengths that go around the circumference of the Earth. And these very low frequencies, um, Earth has a particular frequency that normal is 7.83 hertz. And humans uh, in our normal range is about um, 8 to 12 hertz. So the 7.83 is what um, human animals and all of the other animals um, sync up with internally uh, to have that harmony with the earth and with energy and with, um, especially for animals, uh, geolocation, echolocation, all of those sorts of Okay, so, um, that, so basically it's like we're comfortable when, when everything is resonating at that hertz. Uh, yeah, yeah, for now. So, uh, and I'll go into like, what, <laughs> and I'll go into what the physical, uh, mental, emotional, and um, spiritual uh, energetic effects of that are. But uh, so we really didn't have a way to measure this um, until the late '60s. Um, so he just had this mathematical formula, and the Schumann resonance isn't just on Earth. There are actually uh, a few other planets and a moon, there's Venus, Mars, Jupiter, uh, Saturn, and Titan, which also have Schumann resonances uh, because they have enough uh, electrical activity and charged activity between their crust and their ionosphere to also create these wavelengths, which are always the circumference of the planet. And even though Mars doesn't have any moisture to create lightning, it does have charged dust storms, which I just recently found out. Wow. So. Um, the, the, the Schumann resonance, which they've known up until now, um, and before it became, you know, more of a, uh, an ascension, new age, new associated thing, they knew that they noticed that it was an early predictor of earthquakes, um, that there seemed to be an association between heightened Schumann resonance and earthquake activity. Uh, they have turned this the heartbeat of the earth, which has kind of been a misnomer because that has made a lot of people think that it's coming from inside the earth, like it's an earth's core thing, and that some of the man-made things that we're doing with industrialization are directly affecting the human resonance, and it really, one does not have anything to do with the other, really. Outside. Uh, quick question, <laughs> uh, as someone that lives in earthquake country. Um, yes. Would would the human resonance, uh, maybe, that, maybe we don't have the answer to this, um, would it be before an earthquake, or during an earthquake or after that it gets kind of messed up? Uh, well, that, you know, that's kind of um, hard to say exactly. I have been, what part of how I got into this is that I started noticing patterns. I have always been very connected to the earth. I actually grew up in California and living there was so physically uncomfortable for me because I I knew every earthquake was coming before it got there, and I would have a horrible headache until the pressure was released, um, which I now know that, and then me living in Florida with hurricanes, and then me now living in Colorado, all of the, the path of my life has prepared me to understand all of this stuff and to use it for planetary grid work. But um, so there's a thousand lightning strikes per second on average on the planet. And so that's what creates all of this electrical activity in that uh, cavity in the magnetosphere. Um, humans, as I said, resonate from five to 10 Hertz. And um, that is why being in nature and going out there and getting ourselves attuned to 
the human residence, nature helps us sync up with the planet, which allows our body to heal and regulate itself. Earthing is what we should all be doing, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Earthing, naturing, uh, whatever you want to call it. I have a few other methods that you can use because I understand some people are sort of in a nature desert if they're in a city or they might be homebound and can't get out. Um, I spent a good portion of the last decade really, really ill before I found all of this stuff. And since I have been doing this, the transformation in my health has been uh, unbelievable. I uh, truly. There's a, there's a great video on YouTube about, um, earthing and mm-hmm. it's such a, we're going to hit that at the end because I want to talk about earth yeah. and Jews for sure. yes, okay, yes, good. yes. Okay. So here's some of the ways that, uh, the Schumann resonance affects, uh, humans and other animals, our brain, our nervous system, our cardiovascular system, our autonomous nervous system, our circadian rhythms, our immune function, and our DNA, along with our melatonin levels. Uh, So (laughs) that's a lot. I'm so sorry. Uh, Circadian rhythms, do you have a really good definition of that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Circadian rhythms is your body's uh, innate ability to, it's like your body clock. It's your body clock that says, oh, the sun's up, it's time to be awake. And oh, the sun's going down, now it's time to be asleep. So you can see where interfering with that might be a problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel like everyone's angry right now. Uh, it, yep, it does that too. <laughs> we'll get there. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, that's, no, no, no. It's just, it really is exciting. And that's like, it's just, and so you're on exactly the right track because all of this uh, works together and there are, you know, being, being connected to nature, meditating regularly, um, salt baths if you're not someone who can get out, even listening to whale song, which I'll explain in a little bit, uh, helps with all of that. But the biggest thing is that it affects the hormone melatonin. And so that has an effect on not only your circadian rhythms, but also blood pressure and reproduction. So it's affecting humans, it's affecting, you know, animals and life on earth here, but it is also doing things like activating our crystalline DNA and pushing us into higher consciousness. So the, the human residences, they correlate to the human brainwave spectrum. Did you have a question? Uh, I did, but I didn't know if I should. Uh, uh, that's a good stop for a second. You know what's interesting about melatonin it, and this is everyone except me that I in my circle in L.A. can't sleep. Mm-hmm. Everyone. And I was just thinking as you were saying that, I think the meditating and the salt baths, I'm that might be why I don't have any trouble sleeping. Um, it probably is because you're, you know, you're syncing yourself up with uh, Mother Earth. So, uh, yes. And when you were saying pushing us to, did you say pushing to higher consciousness? So it actually mm-hmm. is having an effect on us that is, yes. Uh, uh, how would I say that? Uh, causing us to look within. Is that a way to say it? With higher consciousness um, being aware? Well, it has, it, it is, but it's, it ha- I believe what I've observed over the patterns of when the Schumann resonance uh, starts going outside of the normal range is that there are different periods of activation. Sometimes they are activating patterns for um, awakening. It, it uh, levels up people that are already awake. It wakes up people that think uh, the rest of us are all nuts to <laughs> follow any of this. Um, and so each time we go through that cycle, there's a whole bunch of new people on the grid. Um, and then uh, the other thing that it does is um, there's a pattern that we go through, which we actually just went through. And I've seen a couple of them so far this year. They seem to be getting closer together, but um, there's a very large collective time jump. Uh, it's like the collective timelines merge and get back into what I'm starting to call a time flow instead of a timeline because time is getting very liquid, uh, where we are in this flow towards the highest good, 
you know, whatever that is. Um, but the, the brainwave spectrum in humans and other um, Earth life runs from, you know, zero to 100. Uh, delta waves are deep sleep, and that's zero to four hertz. Um, and then theta is four to eight hertz, which is uh, dreaming and your flow state. And um, that is when your, your limbic system can also be uh, stimulated, which can produce some anxiety and like remove inhibition. Mm. So depending on where we are in that four to eight hertz range, um, it can, you know, if you're synced up, it's great, but if it's too low or just a bit too high, depending on what your personal, uh, electromagnetic field is, what, what hurts you're putting out that can cause some anxiety in some people and some erratic behavior. Um, the Delta, when, when the Schumann goes down below, it's normal. Like when it's in that zero to four range for me, and this is why I, because I experimented with taking melatonin so I could sleep better when the Schumann is spiking. But I found that when it, we would go into the Delta phase where it's deep sleep, I mean, I just could not stay awake hardly to save my life. Oh, because, okay. Yeah, because, because when it goes back down, when the Schumann gets below normal, your melatonin level goes back up. So if you've been taking it at night, you have like a Schumann melatonin hangover <laughs> the uh-huh. next day. So, uh, so here's where we get into the alpha, uh, brainwave. So we have eight to 12 Hertz and that is alert, but not processing, um, body, mind, coordination, calmness, alertness, um, learning ability. Uh, so that's a, you know, a pretty good state for people to be in when they're relaxed. Um, and then beta, we have 12 to 30, which is highly active, uh, processing, but it can also uh, very much stimulate the fight or flight. So when I see that Schumann is spiking in this range, uh, anything over, you know, 12 uh, or 15 hertz, uh, this is when I see people uh, getting in so many conflicts, arguments. uh, You know, you'll notice that, like, um, the, the news will go crazy. There'll be a lot more um, political crap and people yelling at each other. And, and interpersonally, everybody is just crabby AF. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and, and that's also when, if it's doing that at night, um, people have a hard time sleeping, usually, when it's spiking. There are some people who are exceptions to these, and I think it's because some of us are wired differently depending on what our job is here on Earth. Um, but then we get up, and here's where the higher consciousness is triggered. Um Then we get up into gamma brainwaves, which is 30 hertz to 100 hertz, which is when your brain is working in hemisphere synchronicity. So when both of your hemispheres are working together, that's when you're in those gamma waves. And monks that meditate for most of the day are in that state. Um, People who've been working on their consciousness uh, and who also meditate consistently are probably in that state. Um, And whales and dolphins are naturally in that state. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when I figured that out, I started experimenting with listening to um, whales and dolphins as a uh, means of um, syncing up with the earth. And that works really well also. Um, I've also been channeling with the cetaceans, but that's a whole other topic. But in that, what they told me is that us uh, communicating with them, us syncing up with them and listening to them, like we're their mission. They're here to help help us. us? Ah. Mm -hmm. They're here to help us attain higher consciousness and sync up with the earth as we're going through this process of raising earth's frequency along with all the uh, humans on her. And um, the, the whales are helped during this time of solar activity and geomagnetic storms, which interfere with their ability to echolocate. So we are sort of like lighthouses uh, for the whales. And so I've, I've been <laughs> encouraging people to connect with them a lot. 
Interesting. Okay. So, and two, to recap, so the Earth's sort of, uh, we are affected by how this vibration around the Earth. Oh my God, I forgot to take a break. I was listening. So, okay. Hold on. We'll take a break. We'll be right back, folks. I'm sorry. I was listening so much. I lost my place. Okay. Hey, everybody. Just want to let you know my tarot class is on sale this weekend only until the 23rd or the 23rd. I believe it runs out at midnight. So that'll be two days. You can get half off when you go to KarenRontowski.com and click on tarot. And then you're going to use the coupon code October, all capital letters, October. Also, November 1st, I finally have a Patreon. I know I'm so far behind everyone else. It is a tarot and psychic development. So it's going to be some paranormal, but mostly tarot and psychic development. I'm going to be putting up classes myself that are tarot classes, and we're going to be doing meditations and psychic exercises, and there's going to be homework and all kinds of fun stuff. I'm also going to have guests come on and tell us about their process, how they do their thing. So November 1st, the first class will be out November 4th, patreon.com backslash Rontowski. All right. So, um, this is so fascinating and the earthing thing. So if we are earthing and the Schumann resonance is way off, does that harm us or does it help us by getting in sync with it? Oh, it totally helps us. Uh, and honestly, the only harm to us with the Schumann is a lack of awareness of it. That is what I have found is that having an awareness of what is happening and then knowing how to easily pay attention to it. I mean, you can follow me because I can't shut up about it. And I usually tell people when it's spiking, but uh, by monitoring it uh, and kind of noticing how you feel when it's up or it's down and then knowing, Oh, okay. The Schumann is in the twenties or thirties, or sometimes it's spiked over a hundred. Um, we can get in sync, whether we need to take a bath and listen to whales or we can go outside and, and uh, connect with nature. Um, all of those things help. Meditating at that time really helps as well. And so uh, it's not the human that's um, harming us. It's our lack of natural synchronicity with the earth. Because if we weren't, that's one of the things about industrialization. If we weren't quite so industrialized, we would just be in sync with the earth. Like, uh, the animals, you know, because the animals do pretty well with the human. It does affect them somewhat, like the smaller pets, like dogs and cats and stuff will have um, digestive upset uh, because the autonomous nervous system, just to remind everyone that ca that controls everything your body does. So your digestion can be really affected when the human is spiking. Um, something to be aware of, but you know, dogs will have accidents and those kinds of things. That is so interesting. And you know, I remember a time when, uh, one of my friend's dog, I was actually supposed to visit with them up in Washington and their dog was suddenly like into seizures and uh, like this whole complete drama. Mm -hmm. next day. Totally fine. Yes. Yep. That happens. I have had so many reports of this. It is bananas, but it, it does happen. And, um, sadly, like, some, sometimes it can have the effect of, you know, raising blood pressure in humans and causing um, heart attacks and those types of things. And that's why it is so important for us to be mindful. Um, Joe Dispenza uh, talks about the human resonance and its physical and um, consciousness effects because um, in neuroscience, they have proved that these high human spikes actually uh, affect our, our pineal gland or our third eye. Would they make um, us more mm -hmm. psychic or less psychic or aggravated? This is fascinating. <laughs> um, well, what I believe is happening is that these human bursts uh, are a combination of solar activity and also uh, these oppositional cosmic rays, which we do not have time to go down that rabbit hole today, I'm, okay. I'm certain. But, but it's basically like... Uh, these, you know, it's activations. These are activations that are are coming at Earth because we have reached a certain level of consciousness. Um, so, you know, while it has these good effects, it can also have things like our nervous system is stressed. And, and what is everybody dealing with right now? Adrenal fatigue and anxiety out the wazoo. 
Uh, so that's why it's so important to be having these good mindfulness practices and health practices, even if you believe nothing new, because what I am talking about is measured, uh, you know, accredited scientific facts. These are not things that I'm just, uh, woo-wooing. <laughs> I know a lot of people with adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. So they're basically mm-hmm. kind of out of sync with the Schumann resonance, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It, yeah. So if they can learn to, uh, do some of these practices, especially when the Schumann resonance is higher, it will help them to be more in sync with the earth. Uh, with regard to sleep, by the way, before I forget, in case we don't get back to it, L-tryptophan is a great thing to try versus melatonin because it doesn't give you a hangover. And um, it's, it's uh, you know, it goes, goes out of your system. It's not like melatonin where you have a level that builds up. That so. is such a good point because I do know that melatonin, I it always left me tired in the morning. It always left me tired. Mm-hmm. And tryptophan, which is from Turkey, people get that from Turkey, yes. right? Um, yeah, Turkey, and I think oats also, but I can't eat enough oatmeal to get 2,000 milligrams of tryptophan. <laughs> Okay, oatmeal's good to know if anybody's vegan. You know, it's a very yes. funny thing because I'll just throw this in, this piece of information. My mother always used to say, I can't sleep if I take my vitamins at night. And we always were like, yeah, that doesn't seem to, what I, we don't know what you're talking about. But it turns out <laughs> she was right because if you have your vitamin D too late in the day, it messes with your melatonin, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's something about those two. You have to. Your vitamin D is telling you the sun's out and it's daytime. So I thought that was very interesting. Okay, so um, I'm gonna. Uh, should I let you keep going, or shall I ask about dragons? Um, feel free to ask about dragons. I could go down this spiral forever, but let me just throw out there for people so they know. Um, first of all, and foremost, if all the news is fear fear base and even the scientific journals are doing this they get really excited when these solar storms are happening and we have like an x glass flare which is considered a a higher level um they start putting out these articles like internet killer power grid killer (laughs) um don't don't watch that stuff uh watch my stuff, um, go check out some actual astrophysicists and they will, uh, not be fear mongering about it because in reality, um, it would have to be such a huge, uh, so, and this last solar storm we had, I don't know if you saw the the news about it all, but what happened is there were five very large coronal mass ejections within about two, two days. And the, the fifth one that came through was really big and it scooped up the others and they call it a cannibal CME where it Wait, eats the CME? others. What is a CME? CME is a coronal mass ejection. So that is a coronal mass hole, which cracks me up every time I say uh-huh. coronal mass hole. <laughs> Cause they can be a real mass hole. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but it's, it's an ejection. It's, it's a, really big solar flare uh, ejecting from a coronal mass hole in the sun. And so um, those are what uh, impacts the earth and affects our uh, geomagnetic, um, you know, our magnetosphere. That's what excites the magnetosphere. And that's a perfect place to start. (coughs) Excuse me. Um, With a solar flare. Okay. So when I go on or somebody sends me a uh, Twitter or something, talking about the Schumann resonance being high, okay, or it's Mm -hmm. higher than it's ever been. That means, number one, be sure you're in touch with the earth, right? Be sure you're grounded. Um, And number two, uh, it just means everything might get wonky for a while. Do we know why it spikes? Uh, Why the Schumann resonance spikes? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's a couple of different factors, but the biggest one, honestly, is the solar activity because there's solar flares, there's coronal mass ejections, there's uh, solar tsunamis, there's all these different things, but they basically all wind up with a net effect of lots of solar radiation coming at Earth. And depending on the solar wind speed, 
uh, it can come really fast. And when it does that, um, it hits Earth's ionosphere and we get more charged particles in the cavity between the ionosphere and Earth, causing more electrical activity and lightning, which shoots up the Schumann resonance. Okay. And now, so now we're going to jump and get very metaphysical. So, yes, 2017, last time, and, and I would assume the, that, that we're talking because, here's the thing, I feel like our country right now is pretty much right where it was in 1776. So the United States is on the verge of something as big mm-hmm. as what happened in 1776. Now, so the Schumann residence started off the chart in 2017. Before that, it hadn't been too different, right? Uh, that's correct. It was pretty much consistent. You know, it, it bounced between uh, maybe uh, four hertz to as much as 20 hertz occasionally, but not really very often. The predominant frequency of all of the waves combined that are going around the Earth are is always right at that 7.83 hertz. And um, the reason it's that particular number is because that's what the number is when it is a perfectly round uh, wave going around the Earth. Um, but yeah, on January 31st, 2017, we had our first uh, spike where it was 36 hertz. And then since then, it has just gotten kind of progressively higher when it spikes. And I have the personal theory that with regard to ascension and metaphysics and expansion, that we, that Earth is working towards her having a set point of around 30 hertz like the whales. And so we kind of all have to catch up with that. (laughs) Wow. Okay. And because I didn't take my other break, I'm going to take my uh, second break right now. And then I want to expand on exactly what you just said. Okay, hold on. Hey, I'm here with my friend Ari that hosts, or I want to say takes care of all my Zoom events, my comedy shows, my classes. Ari, tell everybody what type of Zoom events you are great at hosting. Yeah, so I really take care of any kind of Zoom event from um, a virtual camp to lecture series, cooking classes, celebrations like weddings or bar and bat mitzvahs, really anything. And to me, it just looks like you make my life easier. I just have to click on and talk, which is beautiful. Tell everybody, what are you doing behind the scenes that helps me so much? Yeah, so I'm taking care of all of the settings, like muting and spotlighting people, making breakout rooms, recording the meeting, really just all of the tech pieces uh, you might think of or not think of. I'm taking care of that. That is so helpful. And it really is the difference between something looking amateurish and something looking really professional and wanting people to come back to your meeting again. So tell everybody where they can find you. Yes. So you're welcome to email me at wharton.ari at gmail.com. That's W-H-A-R-T-O-N dot A-R-I at gmail.com. And you're welcome to email me with any questions um, and find out how we can work together. And your rates are so reasonable, it's crazy. So everybody, uh, wharton.ari at gmail. I'm going to try and have it in the show notes. If you can't find her or you don't know how to rewind the podcast, just email. I'll get you connected. Thanks, Ari. Thanks, Karen. Okay. So uh, do you... Uh, when, do we know when they started, res- like what, it had to be in the 19th century, or in this century where we started measuring it, where we couldn't go back and say, what was it like in 1776, right? Uh, that's correct. It would be difficult to do that. Um, but, you know, they can kind of extrapolate it possibly by, I'm not sure how much evidence they have as far as what solar activity was, Um I think they can do that geologically, but, but yeah, we really don't know. However, they have been measuring it. Um, See, I don't think the Schumann started doing this until very recently. I think that we had to get to a certain point of human consciousness and connectivity among humans, you know, however many degrees closer to unity consciousness in individual uh, bodies or containers that we needed to get in order to uh, <laughs> trip the universal Janet 
to start this ascension process with the Schumann resonance. So that's actually where I was going. So this age of Aquarius or this um, sort of coming into the matriarchy more so than the patriarchy, it's literally reflected in the earth's energy. Seems like. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's, that's pretty amazing. So it's almost like, you know, it's so interesting how people used to, um, astrology was part of business or it was part of mm -hmm. what they did, or, you know, you, you would, you would watch the stars to watch what you were doing in your life. And now we became so sort of, uh, I guess it would be left brain, left brain or right brain, left brain that we knocked all that out. And here is the sign mm -hmm. telling us this is it. This is coming from the stars. This is coming from the sky. Like you should know this. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? <laughs> so uh, we should probably all also keep a log, like you said, look at where the shoe yes. resonance is and then keep a log of sort of our day or our emotions or how much time we need to spend outside. Mm -hmm. That would be helpful. Most of all, it's it's just about being aware of how you feel and also being aware for, for anyone who's out there. It, it's like what you might notice, we might notice, God, I'm just so anxious today and there's absolutely nothing wrong and I don't know why I'm feeling like this. What the heck is wrong with me? Look at the Schumann residence and there's a good chance it is going to be having some activity and that's because it's triggering your fight or flight system. And so it's very important. You can just do a minute of mindful breathing, you know, in for four and out for four. And that helps calm the vagus nerve that goes down the center of your body through all of your organs. And that allows you to calm your system. And then also, you know, you can remind yourself, I don't have to assign something because what our brain will do is our brain will go, oh, well, uh, we feel anxious. I don't know why we feel anxious. So now I'm going to go through every shitty thing that ever happens in your life until we find something to be upset about. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so then you wind up in that process of ruminating thoughts. And the next thing you know, you're having one of those days where everything sucks and, you know, <laughs> Right, right. What an interesting, uh, yeah, that's, you know, yesterday I was like, I'm tired and I don't know why. And, uh, mm. someone said to me, are you getting sick? And I was like, no, not even like, I didn't put it together. That's really fascinating. All right. So, um, so we're going to watch, we're going to see, we're going to learn which way it affects us. Now, has it been just recently, it's been higher than it's ever been, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. We've had some spikes over this uh, eclipse, not eclipse season, but retrograde season. And I fully expect the window between the eclipses to be quite active. Um, the eclipses that are coming, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, I know you know, Karen, but um, the 19th and the 4th of December, there, there will be an eclipse on each of those days. And um uh, yeah, it's been up into the hundreds. And part of it is it's difficult once it goes above a certain amount for us to really measure how high it is. But it is, uh, I mean, you can just tell. Um, when you first, Part of the reason I studied this so hard is because when you first look at the Schumann chart from the Tomsk Observatory in Russia, you're like, okay, there's a bunch of green, there's a bunch of blue. Sometimes there's some white and red. I don't know what the F I'm looking at. <laughs> and so I started studying it. And so when there's a really high spike, what you'll get is they'll be like all white and it'll just cover the whole uh, vertical chart. Um, and so that's kind of how we can tell. And so sometimes, I mean, we have had over this period of time, we have had those experiences that lasted for hours where it was just so high and then um occasionally it's so high that it it floods the circus it or circuits it throws out the system and the observatory goes offline and it's really funny because sometimes people who don't exactly know what that means 
will put out a thing saying the Shannon resonance is in blackout. It's gone. Like, you know, as if to say it's not happening. <laughs> it's like, no. It's like, no, your phone just died, jackass. But um, so uh, anyway, there is another way, by the way, if you if the Schumann monitor in Tomsk is down, there is an antenna in Marconi, Italy, which uh, mon- monitors from Earth with an antenna versus the space observatory in Tomsk. So okay. we always have a way to check it. Yes, you know, that is interesting because I do remember that day of people saying uh, something about there that there wasn't any human resonance at all and no one knew what that was. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Okay, so tell us about the dragons. Well, the dragons, I, you know, part of this multidimensional expansion I went through was connecting with dragons, learning how to do grid work with them. I started in my local area because of the fires, not this last season, but the one before. I happened to live 10 miles from that really huge one that we had in Western Colorado. Um, So I was working with the dragons to, um, you know, clear the local area of smoke just so people could breathe. And then that, you know, I was like, huh, well, how far out could I expand? And, uh, so anyway, I've had this um, kind of relationship building with them. And then when I started to understand the Schumann resonance, the ley lines, the crystalline grid, uh, how all of that is connected and that we are all points on that, um, I realized that the, the dragons can help us with all that. And so uh, I use dragons with the grid work a lot. And I had the most interesting thing happen recently in a channeling with the whales and the dolphins. Well, the funny part was the dolphins told me that we need more orgasms. We need to grow more what? We need more orgasms. <laughs> um, but they're right, though, because that actually helps with, um, you know, just your nervous system regulation and general feelings of well-being. Um, but the the whales uh, and my some of my guides came and they, they were like, we're going to show you how to help with the water pollution because there had just been an oil spill, I believe, off the West Coast. And um, I actually have a, a cetacean dragon water grid work meditation up on my podcast. And, and give us a real quick example of grid work. Like, can you define that or tell us what that is? Uh, yeah, there's, there's many different types. All right. There are people who um, go to places where there's been a lot of trauma in a particular area of land and they will, um, you know, work with intention to clear that from the land and transmute it. Um, what, And then initially, you know, and then there's others like me who are working to help balance what's going on and to sort of assist Mother Earth through this transition process um, with from a place of gratitude and unconditional love, not like self-serving humans saving our butts. Um, And so the dragons will help. Uh, you know, redistribute water if it's in the highest good to help put out fires, um, those sorts of things. But then what I I do and what I have started doing is um, what I realized when I figured out the human resonance, the solar flares, how it was affecting Earth, uh, and what was necessary, what was going to be necessary during this next 10 to 12 year period where the solar cycle is going to be a bit intense is that we have the ability uh, to link up, become earth sized with our energy and shield the ionosphere so that we're not getting um, a, a dose of that solar radiation and intensity, which uh, could do a lot of harm to life on earth. Um, for a long time, people have had the attitude, oh, well, Earth will be fine. She'll just shake us off like a bad cold. But that is totally disregarding the fact that she's our mother. Mm-hmm. And all creatures on this planet, including us, are her children. And as her daughter, who has this like deep connection with her now, I can tell you, um, she would be heartbroken. She would, she would be devastated 
And so the whole point is for us to learn how to work together to do this for our survival. But here's the really cool thing that just happened, Karen, right before this last geomagnetic storm, which honestly could have totally kicked our asses because the solar wind speed was 700 kilometers per second when normal is 300. And that storm we had in 2017, the solar wind was 544 kilometers per second. So anyone who felt like they were riding on a crazy uh, ride last week, uh, that's what you were feeling is that friction. Okay. Um, And and this is going to come out in December. Actually, this will probably come out right between the... um, the The eclipses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll be good timing. So, so yeah, if you're in the middle of that window of time, um, just be aware of this human resonance and what's happening with that. Um, but we, what happened before this last huge storm that we had, and I'm really excited about it, is that, you see, I'm not the only me. I know somewhere in the world there are other people like me doing this, putting these things together, figuring it out. And there's enough of us who are, Uh, consciously connected to the grid who are making a difference that we have turned on an automatic protection system that uh, there was scientific modeling data proving that it's happening that just came out right before this geomagnetic storm. And that's what I was talking about with the oppositional cosmic rays coming from the other direction. So they're in direct opposition to uh, the sun's, you know, shot towards us. So um, what I got from channeling when I was asking, what is this thing? That's, because I saw this and I was like, what the hell is going on? There's these, these currents coming from the other side of the planet. Nobody knows where they're coming from. I got a voice that was like machinery. It was like I was talking to the universal computer and because we have learned how to cooperate each other with each other, uh, enough of us, what I believe is that we have turned on something that helps us um, and helps Earth during this transitional period. Wow. Uh, I was just going to ask you that. And I have like three, three minutes left. Uh, what do you see? Let's just jump the next two years because I know it's a time of transition. I think that's a nice way to say it. Do you see anything (laughs) as we, or any, I don't want to say warnings, but just sort of words of wisdom or things to help people realize it's just going to be different, right? Yeah, it's, it's just going to be different. It really isn't that scary. Uh, Some things you can do just like you have earthquake preparedness or hurricane preparedness. If you live in those areas, if you happen to be on planet earth right now, it would be a good idea to have, uh, you know, some emergency supplies and um, things like uh, hand crank radios, just things that you can use without um, electricity and try to make your life a little less tied to technology and the power grid so that if for some reason you were without it for a time, uh, you could function. Um, The good thing is, is if it does take out the internet or takes out parts of the power grid, we, we will be able to rebuild that. It's not, people tend to have this idea that, you know, yeah. we're just going to go full walking dead and we'll be <laughs> in, in, like yeah. back in the stone age. And, uh, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> so Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I have been curious about this for so long. So this was fantastic. And I'm going to start logging. Now you post about this. Where can people see all this stuff? You can see my my public updates at, uh, let's see, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I put up little uh, videos or posts updating you when the shoe and resonance is up or when we're having solar flare activity. Usually those things tend to go together. Um, And then uh, I have a Patreon where I go more in depth about this stuff and educate about it. I think after talking to you and realizing how important this is for people, what I might start offering as a public uh, workshop where I just explain it, how you can um, adapt as you're, you're going through this experience and how you can use it to your best benefit. Because when the shaman is high, and I'll leave this with you before we get off of here, when the shaman is high, you can breathe that energy 
into your solar plexus in a meditation and thank it for later. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Thank you, my dear. Uh, and it's, uh, tell me again, I just had it in front of me. Uh, goofy goddess. No, it's uh... goofy goddess. <laughs> it should be that. I actually have been thinking about starting an early fans called giggly goddess. <laughs> yes. Groovy goddess. G-R-O-O-V-I-N-G G-O-D-D-E-S-S everywhere. Okay. Goddess, and I'm finding you yes. right now. Okay, well, there we are. Okay, thank you so <laughs> much. And uh, I guess we're right at the holidays. Happy holidays to you, my friend. Oh, and to you as well. This has been wonderful. Such a beautiful opportunity to talk to you. And um, I know my pod partner and I, uh, I have a different YouTube podcast called Meow Podcast. Um, Seraphina Blackman really would love to talk to you about fairies while we're talking about it. Oh, I- <laughs> You guys, I, I would love to come on your podcast and learn or <gasps> tell my uh, my thing. If you have guests, I shouldn't have forced myself on there. Oh, yes, we have guests. Oh, my gosh. I I would. Uh, I'll send you an email and find out what your emails are. <laughs> yeah, do that. All right. Thank you. Yes. Everybody find the Grooving Goddess. I'm looking at you right now on Instagram. Um, and uh, this was so helpful. So, um, everybody, thank you uh, to Mike at Uno Rising Media. And I will see you next week. Actually, I think next week is Ryan Marquette with his uh, astrological predictions. So, it's a perfect match. It's a perfect month. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.